Welcome back to the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. We saved uh, a tree here, rescued it from dying. Uh, two arborists had diagnosed it as on death's uh, doorstep and recommended removal. And we uh, recommended, uh, let's treat it. Let's infuse the soil with life and uh, see if we can revive it. And it has been a spectacular revival. We'll tell you all about it and show you all about it. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation. I'm here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. I'm a landscape architect, a landscape contractor. And we're back at uh, this tree, which we initially volunteered to revive in about April of 2018. It had been transplanted uh, and declined right after uh, transplanting. And we volunteered uh, to use uh, our products in a formula that's worked very well for us over the years. And we'll show you all about that formula today. So back in April of 2018, the timing was perfect. I really like to uh, revive trees in April. There's uh, other times that work out well, particularly if you have drip irrigation, fall is good. And I mean, you could start anytime, but spring is excellent, especially early spring, because that's when the tree's natural tendency is to put on growth. And if you can put it in a position to follow its natural tendency, it's more likely to show a lot of progress uh, in the spring than any other time. In April, we started our applications, and so our plan was to feed the plant and the soil as intensively and extensively as possible to uh, allow spring magic and soil magic to come together and uh, work very effectively. In this case, the watering was being done manually. You can see it's a very contained area, and so that allowed for us to activate and break down the product because the watering wasn't drip. It was, uh, it was like a flood irrigation in this contained planter. So in other videos, I have covered the point that if you have drip irrigation, then I would probably prefer a fall timing. But spring is perfect if you're watering it some other way where we can activate that product. It's diff difficult to activate the product fully with drip irrigation. So then I like a fall application because we get rain and that can break down the product and then um, get everything in the soil and even do more than one application like we did here. But spring is perfect if we can water that product in and we were able to do that on this uh, African sumac. What we did on this is a protocol that I follow frequently. I get great results almost every time I use it. We did another video where we revived a dogwood tree in much the same way. And uh, what we do is we make repeat applications. In this case, I did, I believe, five applications every other week. So we started with six pounds of blend in, that, in this whole planter under what we hoped would eventually be a canopy of the tree and then over the top of the blend we used our eight ounce container of penetrate liquid biotiller and we put a lot of water like eight gallons uh, five gallons of water with it so eight ounces of penetrate liquid biotiller with about five gallons of water there's no special amount of water you need i like to use a lot of water because it allows us to cover a broader area so that was the protocol and uh, we started that in april 2018 and within about uh, six weeks, we began to see new shoots on the, on the trunk. So that was the recipe. We did uh, six pounds of blend, eight ounces of penetrate liquid biotiller, and the effect of that is we're flooding the root zone with nutrients, trying to get that tree to be in a position to take in nutrients and put on new growth, and we're flooding the soil with opportunities for growing all kinds of beneficial microbes. And it's those beneficial microbes that are more effective at any, than anything else at healing plants and getting over sickness, getting over disease, uh, getting over being almost dead. It works really well with our products. You can use a lot of different things. You can use 
earthworm castings, you can use uh, compost, uh, you can use other organic fertilizers. What I like about our products is they're powerful but in a very gentle way, so they release slowly. We would be very concerned about this same protocol with synthetic products because they're not gentle and you can easily overdo it. Optimize water, optimize soil, and let that tree heal itself really with, with an excess of gentle, um, low, slow releasing nutrients. What we've noticed is our products work way, way better with some mulch over the top. In this case, there was no mulch when we started this process. And so every time we did it, as I mentioned, we came about every other week. And every time we came, I added a little more mulch to it. And then I'd put the next application right over the top of the mulch. And then I'd add, you know, maybe a quarter to a half an inch of mulch. In this case, you can see I used a uh, shredded cedar. I like that because it stays put. It doesn't blow away. Even if your gardener blows over the top of it, it stays put. Um, and I just dug down when I came here today to see the progress. And that layer of mulch is now two to three inches. And that's really good for soil. It protects soil from rain. It protects it from heat. And it makes our products work even more effectively. So uh, I think that's a pretty big part of this being so successful is we started infusing the soil with nutrients and infusing the tree with nutrients and we started in, uh, protecting the soil uh, and putting right over all of those nutrients with a mulch layer. That combination is powerful and you can use other things besides mulch. You can go online, you see some people use cardboard, some people use newspaper. There's lots of different ways to protect the soil. This way is, a little, is somewhat handsome, looks natural, good in a zoo setting. And look what we got. It amazed me when I came here today. Um, the progress in this tree canopy is amazing. When we started, we had about 10 leaves on the whole tree. After our first round of treatments, we shot a video and it looked much better. And you could see it was coming back, but it was still somewhat modest improvement. But as the months have gone by, that improvement is now very, very dramatic. All the products mentioned in this video can be found in the uh, description below. So we're moving on to bigger and better things from our plant naming contest. And now we're into asking you uh, individual questions. You answer them. Uh, we'll put all the right answers in a hat and we'll pick a winner. Uh, and we'll send you some John and Bob's products. This week's question is, what is the oldest living tree on earth? Enter your answer below and we'll announce the winner in next week's video. We did another tree revival uh, video that you might be interested in and in that one we revived a dogwood tree. That process is still ongoing. We're not in the third year like this one, but its uh, progress is encouraging and check out that video.